Good evening and happy holidays. Today I come to you from Milwaukee, Wisconsin where we are here for two weeks for the holidays because this is where my family and Jim's family and friends live. So we are braving the cold weather, um, doing lots of events, having lots of fun, and enjoying the holidays like I know and hope you all are. But I did not want to leave behind my um, 12 habits for 2019 that I wanted to present to you because 2019 is, oh my gosh, right around the corner and we have very little time left before I get them all rolled up. Tonight I'm going to speak about onboarding or the old term was orientation. And in all honesty, I still prefer the old term orientation because that's what you are doing. You are orientating a new employee to your values, your policies, your good things, your benefits, your caring about them. I feel that orientation is as important to a new employee as finding some kind of church to bring your children to when they're young and being raised so they hear the Ten Commandments because regardless of what religion you are or what you believe in, if you can somehow or other get across to your children those ten values of don't kill, don't steal, don't lie, the world would be a great place in which to live. Again, if you do not orientate your employee just like you don't teach the basic rules to your children, it's not a thou shall not kill, it's not a topic that you often talk about around the dinner table. It's something they hear about when you bring them to a venue that rolls that out. Your venue for rolling out your values, your do not steal, do not cause drama, um, do not speak poorly to a client, be happy, be fun, have fun, all comes out in your venue of an orientation. And if you skip that, I believe you never do get across to that new employee your values. Because if one of your values is open, honest, good communications, and you skip the orientation, you already are not mentoring your own values. We maybe want to rethink that. Two to three hours is all it takes if you're a small company, maybe four, four and a half hours if you're large, because you have more to cover. Just your org chart takes longer. The way I do an orientation is very organized. I have an agenda that I give to each one of the people who come in the door. And I change the agenda times so that they really match the times they're starting their orientation. One of the reasons I do this is to keep me on track. But the second reason I do this is many of these people have never seen an agenda before in their life. They are very impressed and feel right from the start that you're a very organized person and a leader and somebody they're going to want to follow and get to know and learn your habits. So 8 to 8.15 is a welcoming tour if you are a large company. If you are a small company and you have an office and a bathroom, it will take you five minutes. So it depends upon the size of your company, which is why you need to redo this agenda to match your company. 8.15 to 8.30, we did company information like who's who. We showed them the organizational chart, which I talked about in interviewing. We did show it to them again when they came in in orientation. We talk about the services that we provide. We give them a company profile sheet so they know if we do or don't do windows, we do or don't do carpets. We give them the history of our company and our numbers. How many repeat clients do we have? How many jobs do we do a day? How many employees do we have? So they truly feel embedded in the company on the first hour of their first day. Then we sign the paperwork. We don't just come right out with the paperwork. Then we go through the employee handbook. I actually go through it with them. It takes about an hour. I don't read every single sentence, but I definitely have them read certain pages and I read certain pages and point out the very important things that are really of value to our company and, and areas where our employees mess up. Then I go through the job description that they will have and tell them exactly what is meant by each one of those items. Then we do supplies training. We show them the supplies before we actually show them the video so they know which supplies they're going to be using that's used in the video. 
Um, then we have questions and answers. It's actually their first one-on-one, -on -one, and we tell them that, that every week they'll be having a one-on-one -on -one with their manager or owner or whoever they're reporting to. Um, and we will ask them, is there anything in this orientation so far that you feel you just cannot do? Because if they say yes to that, you might want to stop it right there. Get their feedback and let them know that their feedback is very important to you. Then we usually take a lunch break and bring them back in and they start watching the videos. Um, you could also show them, I'm talking about the core videos which have five sets of videos. You could show them before you pick up a rag and beds, floors and wrap up, then send them to lunch. You want to sell, show them the video that they're going to start in, either bathrooms, kitchens or dusting, and then come January, play the game that tests their skills in that area before you ever hit a client's home in the field. That could take an hour or two, and then you'll want to go, to, go in the field. So you should be able to get to your first home about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock if you're a big company, 10, 30, 11 if you're a little company, and you will stand there and watch them clean. But it should go very rapidly if they've done both the video and the game. So that is an orientation, folks. If you do that right, and then you stay with them for the remainder of the day, you will have an employee who is absolutely ready to start cleaning. Then it's just speed, and their speed will pick up the less you watch them. So now you just want to drop in and make sure they are definitely following your system. If you don't get started until 2 o'clock, you will probably have to go out the next morning with that person and watch them again. If you're an owner, I know you have to take, and you're cleaning right now, I know it would take a whole day of revenue away from you, please do that. You are better off not cleaning for a day, canceling a client, than you are trying to train and clean at the same time. If you are an owner with a couple of supervisors, do not put this person on that team as a third person. Cut down on the number of jobs and have your supervisor, if they're the trainer, only work with that person that day. Do not make them do their areas of responsibility. It will be worth it because you'll, if you do it right the first time, you will not have to redo it. If you have field operations managers, I am assuming that they are not cleaning while they are training. So, this is the orientation that I believe will keep your people there for a couple of days. At least they won't be in no show the second day. And how much time and attention you give to them for the first week will determine how long they're going to stay with you. They require some guidance, they require some attention, they're a little high maintenance, or they wouldn't, again, as I say, be cleaning for a living. They would be training you. So please, make communications your term for 2019. It's going to certainly be mine, habits and communications. So make communication a habit by always, always providing a thorough orientation for your new people. Make them feel safe and secure because that is the first step in the five steps of making an employee feel comfortable. And that is safety. Thanks. I hope you're enjoying your holidays and I will see you next time when I talk about work order accuracy, which is so important at this time of the year when time efficiency is needs to be maximized and you don't need to be wasting any time with inaccurate work orders. So until then, happy orientating. I hope you're finding people. I hope you're playing the numbers and I hope you're cleaning every house that calls in and requests the cleaning. Thanks.